uh, deeper devotion, make or break. I call it make or break. And the Lord gave me this word, and I thought, make or break. And the thing is, many of us and all of us, in actual fact, all of our humankind, we go through situations every week, every month, every year. You have these, but there's some pivotal situations in your life, pivotal conditions, pivotal things or times of your life where you came to a make or break. Isn't it true? You've come through these. Many of you have faced things in your life, in your marriage, in your finances, in your uh, relationships, in your emotional, in the soul, and in your spiritual life. And there's been these situations which almost broke you or they made you. You see, you come to crossroads. Some of us call it crossroads in our life. Now, this is a make or break. Some of you said the last, last year I was going through a make or break, Pastor. Last year I was going through some stuff. And I believe that when we get to this point or these points in our life, this is the place where you have to make decisions. This is the place where you really need God to speak to you. This is the place where you need to draw from the strength that's available to you. When you come to that make or break, you can, you can be broken, but God can still heal it. Amen? You can be broken, but God can still use it. Amen? Think of the alabaster jar that was broken. It's like our lives. The, the sweet perfume came out because the, the jar had to be broken. And sometimes we feel like, this breaking is there to break me completely, but the breaking is there to bring out the sweetness, to bring out the smell of the, of the perfume, to bring out the pure oil that God wants to bring out. To produce oil, there needs to be a crushing. Amen. And sometimes in the crushing situations in your life, you feel like, where is God? Or well, I'm angry at God because He didn't come through for me. Or some of you are sitting with prayer situations right now and you're saying, why hasn't God answered my prayer? Why hasn't God come through for me? I've been praying for 10 years. I've been praying for 20 years. I want to say to you, don't stop. Don't give up. God is going to make it. God is going to mold you because the making speaks to me about molding as well. There's a molding that's happening in your life. I believe and I'm strongly convinced about this. This last year, God has been speaking to me about our your part that you play, not only God's part. Sometimes we wait for God to do this and do that. God, why haven't you? God, why haven't you this? But there is a part that man plays. There is a part. We have to have faith, amen, to experience God's grace. The Bible says you are saved by grace through faith. There's a faith part in it, and that's your part. I mean, your part is to get up tomorrow morning and to pray again, to go to the closet, to speak to your Father. Your part is to go on your knees. Your part is to worship and praise. God can't praise for you. I mean, what kind of, kind of system would that be? What kind of God would that be that He would praise Himself for you? Amen. Does God wake up 5 o'clock for you to pray? Amen. Does God wake up? God doesn't sleep. Amen. You see, the thing is, sometimes we think God's going to do this and God's going to do this. But I feel there's that part that we neglect, that part of coming. Can God come to church for you? Amen. No, you have to get out of bed, take a cold shower if you need to, to wake up, to get to church. Amen. Sometimes we get cold showers. Amen. The thing is, you have to do these things because it's out of relationship that you begin to follow God and walk in these ways. And I said to someone this morning, you need to pray that God will draw you. It starts with that confession. It starts with that needing God. It starts with that surrendering to God. That's the beginning point. I'm not talking about step one to ten closer to God. I'm talking about giving, surrendering your heart first of all. Saying, Lord, here am I. I belong to you. Everything in my life is yours. In that situation, if you're in a make or break situation, God can make it. God can mold you. God can heal you. God can deliver you and God will deliver you. But the question is, will you stay in the breaking? Because in the breaking, sometimes the enemy comes in. Sometimes the devil comes in and always the devil will lie to you. He'll say to you, like the ladies spoke about it yesterday, no, you are too damaged. No, it's too far gone. No, the situation won't turn around. No, that person in your life will never change. No, you will never change. People see you like this, mirror, mirror. You see, the devil will come in at the same time when God wants to mold you, the devil wants to break you further. But God can use the breaking for His glory. And I believe that's what God is busy doing. Amen. This, and then when I looked at the make and break, the Lord started speaking to me from the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom. And there's, a, there's something powerful that we do that changes our situation, and it's the words we use. It's our confession. 
It's what you say over your seed. If sometimes what happens in our prayer closet, we go in there and we pray these beautiful prayers or we come to church and we have all the faith and we feel strong in the situation and we say, thank you, Lord, I feel so strong this morning that you're going to come through for me in this area. And you walk out and the first conversation you have, you kill the seed. You kill the faith. You just confessed it in church. You just confessed it in your prayer closet. You just told God how He needs to help you. You just told, gave it to the Lord, and then you take it back in the next conversation. Kevin, you know what? I don't think this is ever going to happen. Oh, in the spirit, what happens is you take that thing, and you've killed it with your words. Your mouth is powerful. And that's where we're going this morning. Let's go to Proverbs 18, verse 21. It says there, death and life, and this is a matter of death and life, death and life are in the power of the where's most of our problems in life? Giftige tong. Gif appelkies. Eh? They're amongst us, and we sometimes are the gif appelkie. Amen? And those who love it will eat its fruit. In other words, those who love to speak, those who love to speak before they think, those who love to speak negative, those who love to gossip, those who like to break others down, those that are giving the enemy too much glory, amen? All of these things, you speak it out with your mouth so many times. And you kill the seed. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you bring out. And we're going to go a little bit deeper this morning from this place. But James 3 verse 2 says, For we all stumble in many things. Come on, no, no one's perfect. You're going to say the wrong thing sometimes. I'm not talking about a perfect human being. If anyone does not stumble in word, he's a perfect man. Able also to bridle the whole body. Come on. This is what it tells you. That the tongue is able to bridle the whole body. Now in James it says that the rudder, a small rudder on a big ship, is able to change the course of that ship. Isn't that amazing? This big, massive ship on the ocean goes out and it's got a small rudder that turns and the whole ship turns. The ship is much bigger. The course of your life is much bigger, but the tongue is the smallest part. And this can cause the direction of your life. This can cause where you're going to go. This, I want to say to you, is a prophetic word for you in this church this morning. That you Look a little bit about the things you've been speaking over your life, over your finances, over your marriage, over your relationships, over other people. You will sow what you reap. It comes back to you. It's not that you're killing other people with your words as much as you're also killing your own life and your own spiritual life with God. The seeds that you plant, the word says, death, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. It's a harvest that you are spreading. Every time you say something, you're planting a seed in the Spirit. Amen? Amen? Every time you say something, you're planting a seed in the spiritual realm. Every time you say something, the spirits are listening. Every time you speak something, there's something that will come from it. That is why we believe in. When you pray before the Lord, when we pray before church this morning, when the men come and pray on a Saturday morning, when you pray in your prayer closet, you are praying, you are confessing, you are agreeing with the Word of God. You're speaking things into the spiritual realm. You're not speaking them in this realm. And whatever you're speaking will manifest. Amen? So now you've got to choose this morning, I'm going to sow life or I'm going to sow death. If I'm going to sow life, I will reap Life. If I'm going to sow death, I'm going to reap death from that. And so don't go into the prayer meeting and trust God in that prayer meeting and go home and say to your husband, eh, I don't really think this is going to work. You just prayed for it. Why didn't you allow God to work in it? You see, so after we pray, there's another work that happens. You have to watch what you say after you pray. Write that down somewhere. You have to watch what you say after you pray. You cannot just go willy-nilly and speak about anything you want to to anybody and think that what you, did, what you said, it doesn't have effect in the spiritual realm. It has an effect. God's listening. Your words will come back in a harvest. And so the same with the good seeds that you sow. Won't you choose to speak good things over your husband, good things over your wife, good things over your children, good things over your business? I'm not talking about mind over matter. I'm not talking about finding some new age guru, how to have the best way to meditate that you can levitate. 
I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm not talking about motivational quotes even. I'm talking about the Word of God, amen. I'm talking about confessing the Word. Confession is coming in agreement with the Word of God. Speak the Scripture over it. When the devil tempted Jesus, what did he do? He said to the devil, it is written. And when you're in a tough situation, what do you need to do? You need to find the Scripture, stand upon the Scripture, confess that Scripture, speak it into being because it is already done in the spiritual realm. You need to come in agreement with it. That's why the Bible says, when we come to a prayer meeting, we often say, when we only have two people at the prayer meeting, where two or three of us are gathered. (laughs) But the fact is, the power of it is, where we're in agreement together in Christ, we only need two people to agree. I only need one more person to agree with me this morning on the Word of God. We don't need the whole church to agree, but we've got more than two people, more than three people this morning that's saying, come in agreement. If you are struggling, find someone that can encourage and build you. I'm talking about spiritual mentorship, discipleship. Find people that will speak over your life good, the things of the Word of God, and pray and pray for you and encourage you in coming to church and doing witnessing to other people and doing the things that God has called according to His Word. And you'll see things will begin to change as your words begin to change, as your mind begins to change. We're going to go a little bit deeper with this. From the mouth, there's not only the mouth, there's something connected to your mouth. There's something connected to your mouth this morning. Listen to this, the heart and the mouth connection. You can go to the next slide. Matthew 15 verse 11 and 17 to 20 says this. Not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated by your stomach? Uh Uh-huh. Everything gets eliminated. I've got a bomb shelter for a stomach. How many of you got bomb shelters? I can eat anything. My stomach just goes... (laughs) Have you watched uh, watched that Monsters, Inc. movie when they they put that, that, that person that gets shaven because they got in contact with the child, that little monster, and then they put that thing over it? That's what happens in my stomach. The rest of the family will eat something that's a little bit like suspect and they'll all be going to the toilet all night and Julius will be lying in the bed. Ah. A <laughs> little bit of gas here and there, but it's, it's fine. <laughs> Nothing more serious than that. Amen. It's just, poof, you know, they're in the stomach. Like, here's the bomb shelter, you know. A star constitusi. He saw. Amen. Some people have a weak constitution. They just have to smell something. <laughs> I always joke with Jonathan. Liesl's granny was like that. I used to sit next to her on the chair next to her. And she used to, she used to even get nauseous or something if someone makes a sound like that. So I, I go to granny and I'm in a, a playful mood with granny. And I know granny's going to eventually get up and chase me with the shoe around the lounge and the kitchen. But I'll sit next to her and I'll go. <laughs> and she'll look at me I go. <laughs> and granny will go <laughs> next to me. So I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I say, okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but since she'll see she wants to really vomit now, I'll stop. Okay, okay. <laughs> there's a line, there's a limit. Shame, you shouldn't tease old people like that. Come on. <laughs> but the things that you eat is not what's defiling you. Yeah, the Pharisees, you see the point of this whole... Part of this chapter is Jesus was saying, the Pharisees are saying, if we eat certain things that defiles us, we take it into our body. That's what defiles. Jesus said, no, the things that come out of your mouth is what defiles you. It's the words that you use. It's the things that will cause the course of your life to go off in a different direction. And he says to him, don't you understand yet? Whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach. We just spoke about the stomach. And is eliminated by those which... Those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the? You see, your mouth is not a lone agent. It doesn't act by itself. It is connected to your heart. And that's the deeper devotion that we're doing this morning. We have to understand that you cannot only tame the mouth. You have, it's a heart issue. It's deeper than the mouth. It doesn't come from your mouth. It comes from your heart. What flows out of your mouth. Amen. And they defile a man. Isn't that powerful? Let's read verse 19. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, 
But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. You see, the Pharisees made all of these rules that didn't change people. It wasn't in line with spiritual terms. It was all about making them look good and making them look pious from the outside. But meantime, they were fraught on the inside. Amen. You see, God is saying, no, it's the things that you speak of that's in your heart because you've allowed certain things to come into your heart. You've devoted your mind to some things and it's crept into your heart eventually. And from that place is now coming out of your mouth. You see, the things, people don't arrive at a point where they're negative all of a sudden. They've meditated on some things. They've allowed some things to soak right down to the heart. And when it's in the heart, it's in the core of man. And from the core, you'll begin to live. 